Okay, Panthers, uh, we're ready for number four now, and this is one for you to try. I do want to point out before you try it on your own that the first term is negative, so I want to uh, remind you that that has an implication in the problem. Panthers, we're going to pause it again for about two and a half minutes. Try this problem, and then we'll come back together and we'll see how you did. Okay, Panthers, let's find the greatest common factor first. That's the first step. Uh, and let's see. So I'm looking for the numbers that I want to pick the smallest coefficient. I'm looking for the numbers that go into 6. So there's 1, 2, and 2's pair is 3. Remember, we kind of modeled the idea of pairing up the ones that go together, and then there's 6. Okay. So I'm going to check them in uh, from biggest to smallest. Does 6 go into 15 and 21? Uh, no, it goes into neither one, so it's not 6. Does 3 go into 15 and 21? 3 goes into 15 five times. 3 goes into 21 seven times. Yeah, that's part of my greatest common factor, 3. Good. I'm going to look for my A's now. Is A in every term? Oh, no, it's not. So I can't put any A's in my greatest common factor. What about B? Is B in every term? Ooh, again, no. No. So I can't put any B's in either. That just means my greatest common factor here is 3. So to make this a backwards multiplication problem, I need to figure out what I could multiply by 3 to get negative 6a squared minus 15ab. Oh, I forgot an important step. Anyone know what important step I forgot? That's right. It was negative. Yeah. So since it was negative, it would be wise for me to make that negative 3 in the greatest common factor. You wouldn't be wrong if you left it out, as long as you wrote the correct thing to multiply 3 by. But as, a, as we said in the last video, there are enough purposes in math class where when you're factoring, if the first term is negative, it helps to take that out. So what could I multiply by negative 3 to get negative 6 a squared? 2 seems like a good idea, because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. But I also need the a squared this time, don't I? And a quick check, 2a squared times negative 3 would be negative 6 a squared. What do I need to multiply by negative 15ab? Or excuse me, by negative 3 to get negative 15ab? Positive 5. A, B. Makes a lot of sense. And what do I need to multiply by negative 3 to get positive 21 B cubed? Yeah, how about negative 7 B cubed? So can I write this in factored form? Sure, it's negative 3 times negative 6 A squared minus 15 A, B. Uh, whoop, nope, that's not right at all, is it? You're about to see the magic of television. Here we go. Ah, presto. Panthers, sometimes magic looks like whiteout. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> no, I made a mistake, right? I was copying down the original thing. The other factor needs to be what I would multiply by negative 3 to get this as my answer. It needs to be 2a squared. That's not showing up very well. 2a squared plus... 5ab. Try this. Plus 5ab. And then I need my minus 7b cubed. There we go. Negative 3 times 2a squared plus 5ab minus 7b cubed. Fantastic, Panthers. All right, let's try. I'll do one more. You do one more. I'll do five. We've got 24x squared y cubed minus 18xy to the fourth plus 6x to the fifth. Uh, I'm going to choose to work off of this one for the number part of the GCF because it's the smallest. And that makes me think it's likely to have the fewest factors. It's six again. So what goes into six? Well, there's one, two, three, and six. 
Does 6 go evenly into both 18 and 24? 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24? Yeah. Don't need to check any further. 6 is the greatest part of the greatest common factor. I also need x to the first is correct. And y to the... Oh, I can't use y to the anything. There are no y's in this term. So I can't use any y's. It's just 6x. So here we go. I'm going to make it a backwards multiplication problem. I'm going to multiply 6x by something. And hopefully get 24x squared y cubed. Minus 18xy to the fourth. Plus 6x to the fifth. So what do I need to multiply by 6x to get 24x squared y cubed? Well, I need 4. I need the other x. And I need all the y cubes, y cubed. What do I need to multiply by 6x to get negative 18xy to the fourth? Negative 3 is a good call. I don't need the x. I've already got the x, but I'm missing the y to the fourth. And what do I need to multiply by 6x to get 6x to the fifth? Well, I don't need the 6. I've got one of the x's. I need the other 4, x to the fourth. So I can write this polynomial as 6x times 4xy cubed minus 3y to the fourth plus x to the fourth. We've got it. All right, Panthers, last one, and this one's for you. Uh, we're going to pause it again for about two and a half minutes. I will uh, make no other comments other than you try it yourself, and I will check in about two and a half minutes. All right. What is the greatest common factor? Well, I'm going to choose to work with the 3 here. The only numbers that go into 3 are 1 and 3. Does 3 go evenly into 15 and 12? Yes. So that's part of my greatest common factor. Is there an m in every term? Yeah. So the smallest power of m's that I see is m squared. So 3m squared. And then is there an n in every term? Yeah. And this is n to the first. That's the smallest one, so n. And did you notice that the first term here was negative? So it's going to be helpful if you make that part of the greatest common factor as well. How about negative 3m squared n? So I'm going to factor this. I'm going to write a backwards multiplication. Negative 3m squared n, which I'm going to multiply by something. By the way, in each of these problems, I don't remember saying it. I'm making a 3, a 1 by 3 box because I want my greatest common factor times something with 3 terms to give me 3 terms. So negative 3m cubed, n to the fifth, plus 15m squared n cubed minus 12m to the sixth n. All right, so what do I need to multiply by negative 3m squared n to get negative 3m cubed n to the fifth? I've got my negative 3. Looks like I need one more m, and I need four more n's, so n to the fourth, m n to the fourth. What do I need to multiply to get 15m squared n cubed? Well, negative 5. I've already got the m squared. And I've got one of the n's. I need n, squ uh, n squared. And then what do I need to multiply to get negative 12m to the 6th n? How about positive 4? I've got two of the m's that I need. I need four more, m to the 4th. And I've already got the n, so I don't need that there. That should take care of it. 
So this polynomial in factored form would be negative 3 m squared n times, here we go, m n to the fourth minus 5 n squared plus 4 m to the fourth. And we're done. Okay, Panthers, uh, let's wrap this up. This belongs in page 1144 of your ISN. That glue is in that blue tub under the uh, black um, stand by my desk. Please be respectful with it. Um, go ahead and glue that in, Panthers. Um, you're about to receive the classwork that goes with what you've practiced today. We will mark it down on your score sheet, Panthers as uh, learning target 30 day two. I want to remind you that these three things, the classwork from 29, the maze that you worked on yesterday, and today's thing are the three things that will be collected tomorrow. Friday is a classwork due day. Okay, So if you happen to finish the classwork and you've got time left today, make sure you've got this complete as well. Okay, uh, Panthers, continue to work hard. I'm very proud of you. Um, there is no secret panther today, but I want you to behave like you are the secret panther today because uh, acting like secret panther will get work done for you and give you your best possible outcome. I'm sorry I missed you today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. To make up for secret panther, I will make two secret panthers for Friday. I've already run the program, and I know who the two are. Um, so hopefully on Friday we're able to celebrate uh, not only a win for Secret Panther, but maybe we can finish out that bingo card, and Monday will be a donuts day. I'm very proud of you, first period. Have a good day, and I look forward to seeing you Friday.